Hello and welcome to another episode of Page One, the Writer's Podcast. I'm Marco. And I'm Tarek. And thanks for joining us for another episode of the podcast where we like to speak to writers of all kinds about their writing careers, find out how they got into the industry and try and get as many hints and tips from them as possible. Uh, and we do have a great back catalogue of guests of all types of writers, crime authors, romanticy, fantasy, many, many more, journalists, video game writers, comic writers, but but I, I mentioned fantasy and romantic because that is exactly what we've got on this week. A smooth segue to no, not at all. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, to this week's guest, who is Chloe Penuranda, uh, a book talk star. I think maybe the first person we've talked to who's from the world of book talk. Certainly, in the, in the this sort of size of following that she has, yeah, I think she's yeah, like which a is proper book huge. talk as opposed yeah. to someone that just has a TikTok. Profile. Yes, um, she is uh, the author of An Air Comes to Rise series. The first book, An Air Comes to Rise, came out in 2021. She followed that up with five more books uh, in quick succession. Uh, by 2023, there was a six book series out and they were all self pubbed. Um, and she talks about how she, you know, how she handled that, how she used book talk to her advantage, how she grew her followers. Um, and then how she's kind of transitioned into the trad pub world with the Nightfall trilogy, which is um, just... Yeah, which which is interesting because it's the publishers. I mean, she had actually brought out the first book in that Nightfall trilogy. That's right. Um, when the publisher approached and said that they wanted to publish it, so it got taken down. You know, I, and it is, it's an interesting journey. It's always, I'm always interested in hearing people that have made a success of self-publishing like this that uh, you know we had ryan cahill on um yeah who, uh, obviously massive, massive in, success, in, the, yeah. in this world as well so yeah really interesting speaking to her and hearing about all the techniques and and how she puts together her her content as they call it um and and how she writes her books of course as well and and whether that breakneck pace of writing is something that can be sustained over the long term as well yeah. because obviously that's a lot of books since twenty twenty one. Yeah, I know. That brought out. <laughs> that's um, it. We've, you know, we've, we we have talked talk with folk before who have had that kind of that high number of of books, and that does seem to be something when you're self pubbing, you need to keep that volume going. People kind of expect that, and and yeah, and so if you're someone out there who's looking to to, to self pub um, a series like this, this should be a really really interesting episode. How do you use Book Talk? I want to know how to use Book Talk, so. I'm going to have a listen yeah, to Yeah, I know. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> we 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 absolutely need to understand how to do these things because we're terrible with social media. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll get straight into the interview after a quick advert for our writer's notebook. But before we do as well, I just wanted to remind listeners that we do, we have recently just started a Patreon where you can get all sorts of goodies, including now extra podcast extra episodes. content alert extra content we're trying to learn from chloe here we no, there is more content we, <laughs> we, we released a, a new podcast called drafting notes which is just Tarek and i having sort of shorter discussions about specific aspects of writing um the first one is up on our youtube channel for free uh, i think the next couple will be on there for free as well but after that it will be on the patreon so you can check out our patreon page the link is in the podcast description so please do do that you can also join our discord community via that link as well but as i say Let's get into the podcast and we'll be back at the end with a bit more chat and to let you know about next week's guest. But for now, on with the podcast. The blank page. To some, it's terrifying, an obstacle to overcome. But we prefer to think of it as an opportunity, a blank canvas to be filled with all of the adventures and characters in our head. So how to overcome that fear? Well, we all know the best advice for a writer is, write. Seriously. Get words on the page and more will follow. But what about later, when you start trying to pull those threads of what you've written together? What about the character you wrote about way back at the start? Who was she again? What was she carrying? And where did she leave the MacGuffin that she now really needs in the third act? Think about all those top thrillers you like to read. Or that amazing drama you just watched. What did they all have in common? Structure and planning. As aspiring writers ourselves, we've tried many different methods to try and organise all the thoughts about the stories we want to tell. We've been there searching for a piece of scrap paper to note something down, or making a quick note on our phone in between meetings. 
Or sometimes we'll make a note in whatever notebook we're carrying or a document on our laptop so we don't forget that great idea. Let's be honest, it can all be a bit messy and it's easy to lose track of everything. And that's when we realise it's not just a story that needs structure and planning, but the way we gather all of our thoughts about it as well. And so we made page one. Page one is more than just another notebook. It's a place to put down all your ideas for your latest project, divided into easy to use sections that will help you plan your story so that when that blank page comes calling, you're ready to answer. And then afterwards, once it's written, we realised you need to plan how to let people read it, so we included a section relating to submissions. Each one is designed for one project, whether you want to write a book, a screenplay, a comic or any other kind of story. We truly believe that when you use it, it will help you get to the main event, writing your story. So we hope this helps. We can't wait to read what you come up with. And remember, every story starts with page one. Did you always want to be a writer? I mean, that's a, that's a difficult question because I never, you know, growing up, I never knew that you could be an author. It was like one of these like fantasy things. Um, they don't teach you it in school that it's really a, a prospect or a, a, a road that you can go down. But from early teens, it is something that I've been doing. But the actual publishing side, it's never something that I've been like, I want to be an author because nobody ever taught me that you could be and you mm. could be published. Mm. Yeah, I remember that part in school and you... Yeah, and it's like you go through the big book of like possible jobs, and there's like six jobs in the entire world. Yeah. Like doctor, <laughs> dentist, lawyer. It's like this, yeah. yeah, it's it's yeah. very yeah. It felt, felt like there was no, I had no idea of what there is. And then later on, you're like, oh, there's like a billion different jobs you can do. This is very I, restricted at that exactly. point. Exactly. So I, I think I'm right in saying that during when you were at university, you spent a bit of time writing for a short film and and making animations and things like that. Did that sort of spur your mm -hmm your creative side and, and make you want to try out writing something longer in longer form yeah i mean what i went to the university as i was scotland to do animation it wasn't something that i always knew i was going to do it was a complete um left field kind of course that i jumped into because i didn't know what else to do and um i was a very i've always been a very creative person so it seemed like why not let's just give this a go and quite a few of the modules were very storytelling based i mean animation is and mm. there was a lot of storyboarding we had like a, a short film kind of module and i found that i really loved doing that part and really took lead roles in that part but um i'd been writing like in my teens before that um it just i didn't quite see that as a path or a university course it wasn't until after um, UWS when I left that I almost went to I mean I got in I just didn't go because again it just didn't seem like a career prospect um, into a creative writing course at Glasgow College but I ended up um, not going to that but I definitely think that writing has always been something that's been a part of me and and you I mean it's fair to say that you've from from that that start of not being sure about whether you wanted to write and everything it, it been very prolific i mean since in 2021 you had two books 2022 two books 2023 three books i think so so uh, it, uh, it's um you know uh, quite unusual to have so much coming out at, at, at all at once i mean how did that happen how did you first get stuff coming out I mean, it was kind of like once the train started, it just didn't stop. And I I just, I wrote that first book, um, which was my series, And Here Comes to Rise. I wrote that first book and I think it was the first time that I'd ever completed a full novel and felt like I need to do something with this. And I, I at that point, I didn't know self-publishing was a thing. That was completely new to me. And once I knew that I could publish it, and have physical copies like the hardcovers, the paperbacks, just like traditional publishing would. I was I was sold. So I never actually sent out a single query letter or anything like that. I didn't try to get agency at that time. Like once I knew about the self publishing, um, I've always been the kind of sort of person that if I can do it myself, I'll do it. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I just I set off. I I got my editor 
Um, and then I knew what ca- what type of cover I wanted for that. So it was cover artist next. And I just took it stage by stage, to be honest. And at that time, I had no social medias. I had no idea into the community. I didn't know how big the community is. Like now that I'm involved with Instagram and TikTok and things like that is massive. But I had no clue at the time. I was just taking it day by day. I started off on Instagram and I was just, I don't know, I can't explain that other than I was just determined to tell this story, which branched off into so much more than even I kind of predicted. And I just, I had nothing else going on in my life at that time that I was just really committed, really dedicated to these books. And that's how they just kept coming out one after the other. So, I mean, what I, I have to ask then, because like, what kind of speed were you writing? Because obviously, as Margaret said, you were like two books a year type thing, and then, mm-hmm. and, and and that is something we often see with self pub authors is that it's 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 a lot of content, and readers seem to expect, mm-hmm. a, you know, more than one book a year almost. And 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 so, what was your pace like at the start, and how did you how did you keep that up? I mean, so I did have a nine to five job at the time, um, up until probably I, I became full time author after my third book, I think. Um, but it was just a case of every waking moment was these books and it might sound sad to admit, but I had no other life. I was going to work and I was coming home and I was doing these books and I was just, I was so immersed in that world and telling these stories. And then I started creating content, which I found I really enjoyed as well. It was like a whole other way to, express and create and try to connect with people through the books so it was just like a yeah I I I don't know exactly how much I wrote when I didn't document it but it was just the case of one book was being edited by my editor and I was already into the next book and promoting what was already out there and it was just a non-stop train and at that time I think when I was smaller it was easier to manage because I I don't even know, actually. I don't know. I feel like now, nowadays, I've slowed down and I find it harder to keep up that uh, breakneck pace because there's just so many other things coming my way um, and expectations and things. But at that time, I was just, I was fully immersed and devoted to the books. And yeah, that's just, that's just how they, how they came out that fast. Yeah. I mean, we, we, I want to speak to you about the the sort of content creation side of things and, and the sort of promotion side of things because obviously uh, other people that are thinking about self pub that's obviously quite an important role in it. But if if we can break it down a little, I suppose concentrating on the the book itself. Um, once you had that first draft, you said you got an editor. Um, uh, how how did you find the editor? And then after that, what were the next steps in terms of like getting it typeset? properly and book covers and things like that i found my editor on the professional editor site i think it's the edfa or something association where it has all the editors vetted and things like that so i came across my editor is brian elia she's absolutely amazing she's been with me from the start um and i quickly established a really great relationship with her and she was really excited about the books so once she was on board, I was looking for cover artists. I knew I wanted an illustrated cover. I knew the the type of style. And I can't remember exactly how I came across Alice Maria Power, who does those covers, but it was on Instagram. And mm-hmm. I just I just came across her. And she was like the second person I think I reached out to and was on board. And she's been with me ever since and has done the, the naked hardcover for The Stars Are Dying. So she's been with me since the start as well. Um, typesetting, I did myself through a program called Vellum, which I think yeah. is really starting to become widely used by indies. It is, I would recommend it to everybody. It's a one off purchase and you can create infinite books and they are typeset just as well as any, any book. So, um, I did that myself and I think that's about it. Chapter headings, all these, I'm, I'm a, I'm a sucker for details. So I love all the little details that correlate with the book that go into the covers and the head chapter headings. So getting to have the control of all of that was, um, it really fed my creativity. I love that aspect. So I do feel like self-publishing was always uh, a great avenue for me. I think that, um, you, I think you do need to have that kind of drive for the detail if you're doing it yourself, don't you? Because there's something about, like, I think readers can almost spot if a book isn't quite right like if the typeset is not right or if the fonts are a bit weird or if the cover yeah. looks a bit cheap yeah. or something you know there's 
there's something about it and and it almost it, it puts people off and and you, and you judge it by the look of it without reading the content of it i think and so you i think do you judge to have it by its cover. Yeah. you do this exactly. <laughs> they yeah. do they do yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think I think I think if you're doing it yourself, you do need to have that um, eye for detail, and and uh, and and it sounds like you obviously did, and and when you came to so 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 I would ask about the editor then. So is that like a freelance editing service essentially? You were having this, mm -hmm. you're just paying this editor by the book type yes. thing as you went along. Yes, yes. So she's a freelancer. Um, she has a lot of other jobs under her belt. Um. And she was, she, I think that was, that association was like a freelancers association kind of site that just made sure you weren't getting scammed by anybody. Cause there's a lot of dodgy people out there. A lot of people mm -hmm. on Instagram claiming yeah. to be editors and things like yeah, that these yeah, days. Totally. So I would definitely say, be careful with that. I know so many people who have lost a lot of money through editors. So you no, know, she came, she just, she had stellar, stellar credentials and yeah, she, she's amazing. And nice. and so the the I think that was an um, an ear comes to rise uh, was the first one. Uh, what sort of when you put it out there, were you expecting huge success? Like what 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 were you expecting? Given that you hadn't even considered going down that trad route with an agent and a publisher and things like that, were you just hoping it would it would catch the eye of people, or or what were you thinking? Yeah, I mean, honestly, at that time, I had zero expectations. Things have changed a lot now, and I think that's when expectation grows. Obviously, the mm -hmm. the more that you achieve, the more expectation grows. But at that time, I don't know. I had zero expectations. I got into a lot of debt because um, I was like <laughs> self-publishing. You, yeah. You've got to put it all on your own shoulders. So I was freelancing the editor, freelancing the cover artist, and a whole bunch of other things went into it. But uh, so I got into debt, and... Um, no, well, I said I, I used all my savings for the first book. I got into debt for the second book, and my sort of mindset was that people spend this kind of money on a holiday, and I was hoping to earn back enough to pay that off, and then make the next book, and then pay that off, make the next book. So I had yeah. zero expectations. I was never sort of thinking big, um, image things, and I just I don't know. I started creating content, and things started moving more than I anticipated. And now it's just like, yeah, expectations start to grow, which yeah. is a good thing and a bad thing. So you say creating content. What do you mean by that? Like, what were you, is this stuff you're putting out in social media? What, what, what was that aspect of the marketing? Yeah, again, that was just all playing it by ear. So I started on Instagram and I had, I had I, zero, zero followers on, on either platforms. So I started on Instagram and I connected with a few authors and I was in this little author group and eventually the buzz of TikTok started coming about. Yeah. So this was back in 2021, maybe when book stock, when book talk really started to become a thing. And I had been on TikTok since it was called Musical.ly. Like I knew of this at when everybody was too ashamed to admit they were on it and, <laughs> and scrolling on it. And then it changed to TikTok and then it started, you know, within the author groups, they were starting to talk about how TikTok would be used. And at the time, I was like, I am not doing that. I I cannot put another social media on my plate. But I ended up making an account and I started posting videos and I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing. At the time, um, music's a big inspiration for me. So the way that I create content is just scrolling and I will save a whole bunch of sounds and I will sit and listen to those sounds over and over again until I get inspiration for a type of video. And at the time when my account started to grow, it was these videos of like transition. So it was like going from the screen to the book, uh, my very early content, which was quite unique at the time for, for authors. And I think that really helped grab people in they were quite interested in it and from then i don't know i was creating aesthetic videos um i was on CapCut when it just started becoming a thing as well um CapCut is an invaluable uh tool i highly recommend that app and that's where i made all my aesthetic videos and again music plays a big part in a lot of my content that way and it's like timing to it aesthetic videos and the sort of transition book videos I think people found quite fun to watch and eventually led to the more readership yeah well for th for those that are listening that don't know what cap cut do you just want to explain a bit about mm -hmm. how that is helpful cap cut is a video editing software so it's like 
it's so user friendly. Like it is, you cannot really get confused by it because it's just it's become a lot more advanced now and there's a lot of templates on there which is actually a lot of helpful for people who aren't necessarily video savvy or whatever they've come out with a whole template sort of i don't know if you guys have ever been on CapCut. no one i'm talking I about but um uh, it does have a section there where it's like templates and you can upload your own things and it times it to the music and things so that oh, is very okay. helpful for for people who aren't very video savvy but before that even then it was it was really easy to navigate and it was just a case of uploading maybe like aesthetic pictures adding your music putting in transitions and for books people really love visuals they really love the aesthetic reels to see the kind of the atmosphere of the book is so important they love quote hooks and tropes have started to become a thing so that video editing software is is invaluable do you think your your background in animation and stuff helped you naturally uh, drove you towards that sort of content? Maybe a little bit because it, it was surprising to me. I didn't. I just sort of dove into it head first with the videos, and I turned out to be quite good at it. And it wasn't anything that I really had necessarily had a lot of experience in in the past, video in particular. So it was just something I found fun to do, mm. and just built upon from from there and with that when you started to build up that profile uh, the book came out you know did you notice was there a tangible effect of the the six you know the growing following on social media and the sale of the books as well i would say so i would say so i i didn't start to kind of grow that following until maybe after the second book came out i noticed a sort of claim and that's when I started to feel like oh, this is actually going somewhere this is actually getting seen by people and I think a big turning point for me was when I I got contacted by the bookish box which is like a book subscription um site which was one of the big ones and I just kind of thought my books are actually getting seen by people and this is quite cool and I've just been running ever since I mean how much how much time I'm just trying to think about your kind of overall process when it comes to because you're obviously when you're doing it all yourself, you're you're writing the books yourself, you're you're doing the marketing yourself. How do you split that in your what's your typical day like, you know, in terms of when do you write and how much time do you spend marketing, making new videos, posting content and stuff? This is where I'm just a complete chaos merchant. I <laughs> I mean, I just, I have a lot of time. I think I'm in a particularly unique situation where I don't have a significant other that's needing my time. I don't have kids that need my time. I'm now a full-time author. So it is it is my whole day. And I know that that is not a privilege that a lot of people tend to have. So I don't have a lot of structure. I've been meaning to work on that, to be honest. I do think uh, I do need to slow down a little bit and start taking care of myself and and enjoying other things in life um, because I have just been nonstop for these past few years for these books. But you kind of have to be in self-publishing. You just you don't get that far without either a, yeah. a massive stroke of luck or just being continuously on the ball with it. And yeah. even when things are, are tough and not getting anywhere and you're comparing yourself to a lot of other bigger things, it just naturally starts to happen. It's just going 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 so i i don't really have tips on a sort of structure or hours of the day on on what i i i write when i can and in between that i'm just creating content so it's just between those two all day so i mean you you say you don't have a a, a structure there but when it when it comes to the actual writing side of things um Obviously, An Ear Comes to Rise was the first book, but it was the first in a series of books. Did you, you know, are you are you a planner? Are you a pantser when you write? Did you have an idea for the whole series or was it just that first book initially? So I've had like plans, of course. Plans do change, especially in such a large series. But um, I feel like every book changes. So at the first book, I... I just, I wrote that one all out and it came to me linear, naturally. And then as the books go on, I find myself pantsing a hell of a lot more. Um, there's so, especially in Here Comes to Rise, there's so many point of views in that series. And it is 
a lot of world building, a lot of interweaving plot points that I find myself really rating out of order. So I'll rate maybe somebody, one person's timeline and then another person's timeline, and then it's weaving them all together. So that structure is different from like the stars are dying, where that came again, first book, far more linear. And then second book is starting to become more. And then my process starts to get a little bit different. So I would say there's no right way to write and mm. every book is going to be different. Well, you mentioned it there, but um, Stars Are Dying is your newest book, which I think is out 8th of October. Um, yes. This was next month at the time of recording. And um, I'm going to ask you to just you know tell us what the book's about, but also it's your first traditionally pub book, isn't it? Yes. It's quite it a bit change. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to getting, getting into that as well. But, um, but first of all, tell us, what the book's about? Oh, this is the, the question every author <laughs> dreads. So I'm going to try yeah, my no. best. Tell but, me your entire novel uh, in like a 30 second soundbite. Uh, <laughs> um, so, I mean, book one it follows Astrea, who is a woman with lost memories, and she meets this man called Knight and accepts a kind of allegiance with him to uncover the secrets of her world and gets thrust into these trials where she's trying to win a century of safety for her kingdom from the vampires and it is really the beginning of a far larger picture between um, a star-crossed love story with a villainous love interest who is never supposed to be in that world and the savior and how their existence together is shaking the the balance of the world and and nice. as as Tarek said, it is your first trad pub book. What what was the route to get there? Did you get an agent to to get that deal? Did publishers approach you, giving yourself published success? How how did that happen? So uh, again, it's a very unconventional route into traditional publishing. So I was all set to indie publish that book, and it did. It wasn't indie published for a short while, but it was just before that book came out, like literally weeks before that book was coming out, that I got contacted by my by my agent, um, Jessica. And initially, I mean, she had only read *And Here Comes to Rise*, so she wanted to get that book sold off to to Trad, um, but everybody was more interested in *The Stars Are Dying*. I think because it was a, a first in series, it had um, a lot of good press my content was really getting seen with that book so uh, i was having a good run so a lot of publishers were more interested in that book and so once i signed with jessica she went out on submission with everything and we ended up selling to uh bramble and wildfire the week before it came out so they were fine with it going ahead with the launch um but they did oh, pick okay. it up the week before it came out um, the launch happened, it came out for a few months, and then I took it off shelves. They kept the ebook up, so that's been out. Um, and then they they revamped and redid a lot of the physical stuff and put together this whole big launch for it, which I'm so blown away by and very excited for. And that's, that's how it happened. Was there any hesitation on your part? Because mm. we've spoken to... You know, we've spoken to a, a, a few self-pubbed authors that, that have, some have gone into trad, some haven't. Ryan Cahill was very much like, no, I'm quite happy doing this. I'm quite successful. This is working out for me. Um, whereas someone like Hugh Howey has has done both and I think continues to do both to some extent. So, you know, was there any hesitation on your part in losing some of that control that you'd had over everything by going with a traditional publishing? I don't think it was. I don't think it was any hesitation on my part for a few reasons. One, I got to do everything I wanted with that book. I mean, it was it was set to go. It was launched, so I did get to do everything I wanted to do. But mm -hmm. I think um, even from an Air Comes to Rise days, I always knew that if the opportunity came, that I would want to try traditional publishing. I I had a good run with an Air Comes to Rise, but self publishing is also very lonely and also very taxing and. Mm -hmm. I know that the the social media side will always be the pressure on me, but it's, it feels really good to know there's a lot of people, a lot of other people investing in the success of this book. So I think I got to the point where it was like, I, I wanted to try and see if this would help me grow more than I, expand my horizons more than I could myself. I felt very limited in a box with 
self-publishing. I mean, I love self-publishing. I think I will continue to self-publish in the future, but I think having both is is definitely something I always wanted to do. And I mean, so by the time that the publisher came along for um, Stars Are Dying, you'd you already had like a release date locked in and stuff, and they came on very last minute. And so I'm intrigued to know, like, you'd already used your freelance editor and stuff for this book. Going forward, what's your plans for, like, book two in, in the series with, with the, the publisher? Are you trying to kind of keep that self-pubbed mentality going forward and, like, kind of do it kind of indie style but with the backing of a publisher? Or are you is your future books with them going to be more doing it by their playbook and use their editors, etc. What's What's your thoughts there? I mean, so book two is all done. Book two is, it's coming out in January. So that is all done. So yes, I did go through a completely different process. Um, I mean, they did have an editor run over book one again. Nothing changed in the book, a few minor things. But um, with book two, that was completely under control. And it was okay. very different. There was a lot more different eyes on it i'm used to working with the same editor and going back yeah, and forth mm -hmm. and there was a lot of there was a couple of more people on this um but i don't think they were they were very accommodating they didn't want to change too much of that one or anything so i don't feel like they were they were very demanding they stuck with the same well the u.s stuck with the same kind of cover design cover artists so that's still the way that i would have done it um the uk has gone a bit of a different route but i think that's quite interesting to see you know the different the different styles but no i'm, yeah. I'm quite happy with how they've handled the the transition for that nice and, and the the other difference i suppose must be you know when you were self-publishing it was like two books a year at least um mm -hmm. and and tra trad publishing although so I think because of the way this has come about, it's not as slow, but trad publishing can be quite a slow process, uh, even when it, you're talking about series fiction like this. I mean, is that something that you are you would welcome, given the pace that you've been going at? Or, or are your plans to still self-publish going to keep you going pretty much at the same pace anyway? I mean, this is a thing, and I don't know if it's a misconception or if I just have different circumstances, but... I said this before that I feel like I, I, I'm working the hardest I ever have with less to show for it, like far less to right, show yeah. for it because I'm used to yeah. doing the releasing a book yeah. twice every year and that's the reward. You know, I get to release another book, whereas like, you know, book two, after book one edits, it was straight into book two deadlines and then book two editing and book two, and it was it was go, go, go. And then on top of that, I also have to finish and here comes to rise. I have one book left in that series. And on top of that, I wrote a contemporary romance to it and I self-published that. So I I have been working more. Um, I do think that the pace for traditional publishing behind the scenes is almost just as fast. You just don't see the book. So it's like I have handed in book three already, which doesn't come out till late next year. Yeah. And that's new to me. That's completely new because I'm used to working quite close to when it comes out mm. a couple of months mm -hmm. before it comes out whereas this is a year in advance they want everything a year in advance so that's been an adjustment because i think as authors after all that work we're like we just want to give you the next book and to know that it's like sitting there and it's ready but it takes all these print print runs and everything it has been the adjustment for me i wanted to ask a little bit about the um about the kind of the marketing stuff that 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 you that you've done, and presumably the marketing stuff that will continue to be done for the for the new series of books, because it seems like a certain type of book does really well um, on TikTok, like and it's it's maybe just a kind of the swell and or whatever of the marketing. I don't know what metaphor I'm trying to <laughs> say here, but basically, <laughs> you know, we're, 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 we're in this kind of yeah, yeah. ebb and flow yeah. of the marketing, yeah. Because we're in this kind of, um, obviously, romanticity is massive at the moment. And that's a huge, it's a huge thing that everyone is 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 loving. And and do you think that certain books do better on TikTok? Can they lend themselves to TikTok better? Like that certain genres, um, and are there certain genres that you don't think would ever be big on book talk in the way that a lot of epic fantasy genre novels are 
I think certainly, I mean, over the years, like you said, there's been just shifts all the time. So that's why I struggle to sell An Air Comes to Rise these days more because it is a longer fantasy series. I mean, there is romance in it and it is a romantic fantasy series, but it doesn't, it's not as romantic as what is trending right now. So it is a harder sell. Um, And I do think that what we see trending on TikTok is... The, there's a common theme and people are really leaning into that romance now we're in a romantic era for sure um but uh, that being said i do think that book talk is very broad and what i see on my for you page is going to be different to somebody who hates romantic and is not yeah, seeing that enough. so to yeah. them they might be seeing like all their biggest books are um you know brandon zanderson and and, and mm-hmm. books like that yeah. um that don't have a lot of romance in them and you know another big one right now is red rising which doesn't Mm -hmm. have a lot of romance in it so there's definitely uh things can take off on tiktok if it is or i I don't know what it takes but i do know that uh, we are in a romance era so at least on my side of things i think you guys have seen it as well that people really love people really love that romance part right yeah I think, I mean, even the examples you gave there, though, I mean, I, I, I think it does seem, looking from the outside, and I have to say my experience with TikTok is is, is very minimal. Um, probably but, more than mine, Mark. Yeah, exactly. But um, it does seem, looking in, that, you know, fantasy generally, whether it's romantic or, or the Brandon Sanderson sort of more epic fantasy type stories or whatever, does well there. Um uh, romance generally, sort of drama, Colleen Hoover type books do well there. But something like, I don't know, a uh, uh, no- crime noir type genre or something like that doesn't seem to lend itself as much to uh, the user base there. I, d- I don't know if that's accurate, as I say, because I haven't I haven't spent a lot of time on TikTok. But it, it, it seems to be really good like really really good for certain genres but the other genres maybe not not so haven't quite managed to break into that yeah i do think i do think that it can come down to the algorithm and the reason we're seeing sort of very similar type books become more popular than than maybe some others is because people keep talking about them and that is what is trending so if you go on there and you talk about your favorite crime yeah. book and it doesn't get seen you could be like even a big account goes on there and talks about their favorite crime novel and it might just not get the views um that is what is so kind of frustrating about tiktok and why a lot of people are writing to market a lot more and mm-hmm. uh romantic is booming because it is it is all about what is what is getting seen um it's not necessarily like a crime book could be outselling one of the romantic books that you're seeing a lot on TikTok, but it seems more popular because that is what gets the views on yeah, social media. Yeah. So I do think that it is a spectrum that we can't really know unless you've got the sales stats. But yeah, definitely from a social media standpoint, it is easy to think that only a certain type of book is going to sell. And I do think it is more difficult. I think for people writing or um, talking about like crime books or even like sci-fi books I think have a difficult time mm-hmm. um, maybe even dystopian I think is making a comeback but I think that kind of has a difficult time that they turn to different avenues like more like ads and things like that rather than social media I think social media has definitely turned into a world of, of fantasy and romance and romantic um, mm-hmm. is what I predominantly see as well yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting isn't it because they often say or certainly the writing advice that 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 you often hear is don't don't chase the market don't yeah. try and write whatever is hot right now because by the time it comes out it'll be gone but i wonder how valid that is these days with things like book talk and tiktok and 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 you know the ability to self publish as well especially yeah, yeah, because you can faster, get you? you can get it done much more quickly it might be true that if you were chasing a trad publishing deal it would be two years, three years, four years before the book actually comes out, and by then the market's changed. But if you're with with all the avenues that are now open, maybe that advice isn't isn't quite right anymore. 
No, I definitely think that that is, yeah, a time of traditional publishing with indie publishing and with writers that I spoke to myself, they're definitely leaning into more watching the market, what is popular, because I do think it just, something that becomes popular like romanticy is like a broad, broad yeah. term. It's like, it's not necessarily write vampires or write this yeah. type of book, but it's like, if you're hitting that romance, like the tropes are so important these days to readers, it is, is how they they kind of relate to these books and, and pick them up and know that yeah. they'll like this one because they like the tropes in that one that authors are really paying attention, specifically indie authors, because like you said, traditional publishing takes over a year. I do think that traditional publishing is trying to catch up these days. Um, with mine, uh, they are releasing them well, every six months. So I think yeah. that they are, and, and you're seeing more indies getting picked up these days. And I think they're really leaning on the indie pace and they're picking up indies that have uh, a faster paced background and they're really leaning on that and I think trying to match the indie pace in a, in a sense and this is why I say that I think uh, we're working harder but not seeing the results as yeah. quick mm -hmm. um, because they are trying to maybe pick up these indies and get them out quicker um, this is my sort of take on the whole situation so mm -hmm. far yeah with the with the pace of all that stuff you know with the the kind of um, ever constant pressure to keep books out faster and even, as you say, going down the traditional route, even there, speeding up perhaps in terms of certain genres. Do you worry about getting burned out? Like just putting out two, three, four books a year and thinking, actually, I, I don't have any ideas or I just cannot get the words out. I'm just knackered. Yeah, I feel like I'm hitting that stage. <laughs> I'm not, not going to lie. I, I feel burned like I'm out hitting now. That stage. <laughs> yeah, I've burned out now ever since I got picked up. But um, <laughs> yeah, for me, it's it's not it's not a lack of creativity. It's just uh, an overwhelming burnout where I have no lack of stories. There's so many books I want to write. I There's so many, you know, I'm trying to write this last book and then it comes to rise and I know what I want to write, but it's just, this overwhelm so many pulled in so many directions yeah. that um it definitely catches up with you um there's only so long you can sprint for before you need to kind of take a step back but mm -hmm. at the same time you have this fear that if you stop sprinting everything's going to stop tomorrow is is my <laughs> is my fear so but yeah it, it is definitely you're you're bound to hit a kind of burnout if you hit that kind of pace for sure yeah, I think I think it is important to, even if you've got all those ideas and stuff, as you say, especially now that you're trad pub, you probably do have more things pulling at you in 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 different ways, and it is important for writers to to take a step back sometimes and just take a break, and you can always go back to and yeah. you know I know your 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 readers might want the next thing immediately, yeah. but they'll still be there probably waiting for it waiting for it whenever it drops but um you you said there you were you were writing the is, is it the last book in the year comes to rise series is that what's coming a after the nightfall trilogy is that is that what's coming next yeah that book's coming out after book two of nightfall right, okay um hopefully in march and then what what else is in the in the pipeline are you what just concentrating on on nightfall and that mm -hmm. and then maybe take that break that I mean, we were just talking about no i don't think i'll take a break i don't think i'm capable of taking a break um i i would like to try and sell another book to trad i think i would like to try and publish something trad off off the press you know because I've, yeah. I've been indie published and even nightfall was indie published initially and i would just like to see how it would work or how the launch would compare just fully trad compared compared mm -hmm. to indie. So I have either another full epic fantasy series in mind, or again another shorter romanticy, which would be more the 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 easier sell, or another epic scale fantasy. So I'm between those two, but that I don't think would be on the cards until at least beginning of next year. Once I get a couple more of these books off my plate. <laughs> What was the last book that you read? It was, uh, I just finished the Prison Healer trilogy. 
Um, okay. Oh God, I can't think of the author off the top of my head. <laughs> I don't know ah, that one. Yeah. The Prison Healer. The Prison Healer trilogy was really good. It's a YA fantasy. Okay. Um, I'm sure a few listeners yeah, will, will know we what can, I'm talking about. <laughs> we can look at. We'll we'll put it in the description when we we'll look it up. Um, what about the last film that you watched? I haven't been watching a lot of films, I don't think. I've been in my anime era. There's so much inspiration for fantasy and anime. Um, so I'm finishing up the last season of Attack on Titan right now. So oh, yeah, nice. that, that's, that's been, yeah, it's been taking up my time. Very, very last thing we do is a super quick fire either or. And I always say there's no uh, right answer here apart from perhaps one of them. But we'll start off with uh, traditional or self-publishing. Oh, that's that's a that's a, <laughs> a weighted question. Um, I, I, there's so many factors that it depends on. I can't sway anybody which way or the other because there's just so many things, um, financially, mentally, that that factor into it that is circumstantial. I don't want to like, you know, tell anybody there's this way better than the other way. I know, <laughs> but you, unfortunately, you have to pick one. <laughs> I have to pick what I prefer. I don't think I have enough experience in chat, but I love indie publishing. Okay. So I'll go with, with indie. Yeah. Fair. Uh, TV or cinema? Uh, TV. Okay. Uh, Night Owl or Early Bird? Night Owl. Fair. Uh, music or no music when you're writing? Do you know, when I first started writing, I always had cinematic music on. Now I need silence. I don't know right. why, but yeah. No silence. Cool, fair enough. Um, and last one, paper book or ebook? Uh, for reading, I prefer ebook. Tar Tarek's very happy. That's that's very few answer. people say ebook. Very so. few people give that answer. <laughs> There's a lot of wrong people up there with bad information. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Chloe. That was a really, really fun chat. Always genuinely interesting to chat to folk who are approaching things from a completely different kind of alien area from me. And the whole world of book talk is a is a cold and barren environment that I do not understand. <laughs> would not last long, and so it's it's genuinely it's great to hear that. And I mean, seventy four thousand followers on TikTok is massive. That's like yeah. seventy four thousand times more than I have. On any <laughs> That's media. certainly true. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, is it massive? I don't even know how, you know. On Maybe it's, it's massive to me it, anyway. But it's certainly massive. Know, but yeah. No, but obviously makes a huge success of it, as you say. And yeah. also worked so hard to get those self-pubbed books done, with working with editors and, and getting covers done and all that sort of thing. So yeah. it, as we've as we've spoken about before when we've had self-pubbed authors on, if you want to make a success of it, it's almost like running a business, isn't it? Yes. You, you have yes. to do, you have to be all over the detail of everything. Um, so it was really interesting hearing about that, but also about now that she is trad pub, but the trad publisher has almost taken a book out of the uh, a page out of the self publish. That's right. Approach. That's right. Yeah. With this very quick release of this trilogy, um, which yep. is something that you would never normally get in a, especially no, that... a fantasy series. Uh, you know, I'm just thinking of the likes of well, George R. R. Martin's obviously one extreme, but even <laughs> your regular fantasy series. Yeah, you know, you'd be talking a year, yeah. year, two yeah. years, three years, four years between books. So yeah, a whole trilogy in within the space of a year is is pretty incredible. And maybe this will be, start to become more the norm. We'll get you'll get people kind of front loading trilogies or duologies up front and then releasing them in a six month, eight month window. I mean, I'm, I'm if the happens. books are written and they're ready. <laughs> I do wonder sometimes why publishing, you know, why know, it does take quite so long. It, I know, there's always that risk of, you know, and especially when you see people chatting about how each book does maybe a half as well as a book before, you know, but nobody, and, and, and part of me is and like, part, it's because people forget or they don't yeah, realize. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, uh, there's some series, and it is fantasy series, that have, you know, I've written, I've read the first two or whatever, and then by the time the third one comes out, I will have no clue yeah. as to what. <laughs> happen yeah yeah, yeah. Books. no totally so am i meant to read these you know 800 yeah. page books <laughs> to, work, to get up to speed you know so it doesn't you know it doesn't really make sense uh, i i have been definitely like that for tv shows I, where I, yeah. I, if it's week by week i will say well i'll wait till it's pretty much out and then i'll just sit and watch it in one big go because i i, I just i just want to have it all i want to have it all there or know it's gonna be very soon available and then just watch it i struggled to remember what i watched a year ago 
Number no, well, that's a, that, so Peter's like a show that I loved was Arcane on Netflix. Oh, yeah. The yes. second season no, has just that. dropped. I could not tell you one thing that happened in season one. No, neither could I. <laughs> so I'll need, to, I'll need to watch one of these recap videos or something <laughs> to try and remember. I watch a recap video on YouTube every time I start a new season of a show that I already watched because I, yeah. I don't remember one thing. And I always spent the whole 10 minutes being like, oh, I forgot that. Oh, I no, no remember <laughs> yeah, that. Exactly. Don't, remember, don't remember that bit at all. <laughs> Exactly. But um, yeah, th thanks very much to Chloe for coming on. Uh, obviously, you can pick up The Stars Are Dying. Now, um, yep. we'll put a link in the podcast description. She also mentioned that she read Prison Healer, but couldn't remember who the author was. And I think it's Laie Noni. Noni, N-O-N-I, I think. I'm not sure how you say that yeah, name, but I think that is the book that she was referring to. Um, but next week, we are staying in the world of fantasy, but a slightly different type of fantasy. Slavic fantasy. We're chatting with uh, Genoveva Demova, who is uh, an author of Slavic and Scottish uh, combination. She uh, grew up in Bulgaria, moved to Glasgow, and she writes um, the, the, the Witch's Compendium of Monsters, uh, Geology, um, which is a really cool kind of, well, it's hard to, I don't want to call it Slavic fiction, or because, because that's, interesting chat we have with her about is there such a thing as a kind of slavic fantasy yeah but it is it's 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 fantasy that is a bit different from all the fantasy that we you know until recently yes. was being yeah, the usual western stuff there's yeah. definitely been and we do talk about with again about this but there's definitely been a much more uh broad range of fantasy on offer recently but it is yep. a pretty recent phenomenon that that, that that publishers are open to publishing fantasy that isn't your classic european medieval yeah exactly, uh, exactly. type fantasy so um yeah it's a really interesting chat so please do join us for that one if you enjoyed today's episode please do take the time to rate and review us on your favorite podcast app as that helps us to continue to get great guests on the podcast and as i mentioned at the start we do have a patreon so please do check that out as well because we would love your support it does take a lot of time uh, to put all of this stuff together so um, any support you can give us we'd be greatly appreciated and of course if you want to get in touch you can always drop us a message on twitter or any social media by just searching for uh, at uk page one send us an email to podcast at rightgear.co.uk drop us a comment on our youtube videos Come along, as Margaret says, join the Patreon, come along to the the, the Discord, uh, have a chat with us face to face, tell us directly to our faces how much you hate our show. That's <laughs> absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we the Discord is the you know, there's only a few people on it at the moment, but it is growing and it it would be great to get more people on there because it's it is a good little community that we've got going there and it's great fun chatting about books, but also other stuff as well, as it yeah, as it occurs absolutely. to us. So please do check that out. But uh, otherwise, uh, have a great week and we will speak to you next episode. See you later. Well, we hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode like these ones down here. And if you want to get in touch, you can do so by finding us on our social media platforms up here or drop us a comment way down below there. But otherwise, thanks for listening and join us for the next episode. See you later.